Okay, here's the problem I'm trying to solve today. This is the 59 basement. And listen. This, uh, it's been doing this for quite a while. It doesn't seem to affect the tone or anything. I just always wanted to, you know, see if I could figure out what it was. I mean, everything seems to be working. You can see those silver astrons in the phase inverter right there, those big ones. Those are the two I had to replace after the original shorted out. And what it did was put a lot of voltage on the power tube and made it real hot and also probably put a lot of voltage over those big resistors right there the screen resistors which look okay it actually smelled burnt the night it happened at a gig and I was really surprised that the tube still worked because the amp stopped working I mean it just I thought it fried something and as soon as I replaced those capacitors right there it worked fine but, you know, I just wanted to give a shout out to Gerald Weber. He, uh, he's always there to help. He, and he's the one that writes all the books about amp repair. And he uh, has webinars every week that you can join. The first month, I think, is a dollar. And then after that, it's forty nine ninety five or something a, a month. But you learn a lot about amps over the phone. And that's what I'm going to do. But in the meantime, he's always open to emails. And I emailed him about this. And he suggested that, it, you know, the tube got stressed. And just, you know, see if, try a new tube and see if it goes away. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch out these tubes. And I'm also going to see if maybe that resistor is bad or something. I mean... It, it reads at 470 ohms, just like it's supposed to, both of them. Uh, I didn't switch out the tube because it still worked, and it's a, you know, one of those high-dollar new old stock Tungsol, Tungsol 5881s. So, we'll see if we can figure this out. I sure hope so. If not, the amp still sounds great, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I just wanted to listen one more time. It's a little more consistent. I always tell Gerald that it's it's consistent like a clock. And it doesn't do it all the time. I mean, when I want to get rid of it, I just flip the standby switch up here. Watch, it'll go away after I flip it once. See, it's gone. So, I don't know if that's a clue or not, but we're going to try to troubleshoot this thing. Like I said, when this thing shorted out, I had two basement running, so it took me a little while, a few minutes, to realize that one of the amps had gone off, or this one. And uh, my drummer said, hey, what's that smell? And then I noticed it too, and I, so I tried to play the amp and nothing was coming out and that's a big big red alert red flag when no sounds coming out so I shut the amp down thought for sure I'd blown something serious and I have yet to figure out if I did any really real significant damage I, I mean I used the same tube but as you can see uh, we thought maybe this resistors would have been what, where the smell was coming from. And this one's got just a teeny little spot on it and I don't know if that was already there. It looks a little hazy like it could have gotten hot. I can't even remember which tube socket it was but uh, see right now that it's not making that sound. It's almost not worth messing with. So I probably won't. But, uh, 
Those are actually from the Fender factory are supposed to be one watt. These are two watts, so apparently somebody changed them in the past. And the one watt, if I'd have had the one watt in there, it probably would have fried. They say they, they kind of acted as a backup fuse for your tubes to protect the tubes and the transformers. So with being two watt, I'm thinking that it could get hotter and not burn up. But... Uh, or take more voltage. Either way, those things are uh, not factory resistors. This is what the base on my tube looks like, probably from the high heat. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Even though the tube still works, probably not a good thing, so Good thing I've checked it out. I think it may have been cracked before, but I still used it. But it's a goner now. Well, I thought we were going to solve a problem today, and I'll tell you what. The old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. It's you know, you can't hear anything right now. It's perfect. So we're not going to mess with it. Uh, I know my tubes are pretty well matched and I don't want to mess with those. Uh, uh, so that's it. Uh, I don't know if we really learned anything except don't mess with them if they're, if they're working. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, we're slowly getting there, and it's not turning out to be such a great deal yet. One thing I want to show you, I talk about Gerald. I have these two books. I have some DVDs too. I don't. I use these books more, and both of them have troubleshooting guides in there. And the basic troubleshooting 101, first thing you're supposed to do, which is probably the last thing I did is remove the tubes until the sound stops starting with the preamp tubes see how those tubes are gone well when I pulled the second tube the sound stopped everything's dead silent so what you're supposed to do is substitute a known good tube in there so I substituted an A tube I'm not sure it was good but I'm pretty sure it was good and I still have the same sound. I'm going to do another tube later. But I've got everything going this morning. There are the tubes that I've pulled out. Plus an extra that I've been using. My tube tester just for fun to make sure everything's working. And there's the front. Um, the bad thing is, is it's between... The first tube and the second tube, as far as I can tell, or that's why I've got to go back to the books and double check, but uh, now I've got to figure out which component is clicking, and there's some techniques on shorting the resistors so that you can isolate, or not, I don't know, don't quote me right now, because I'll get you electrocuted. And also, when you pull the tubes, I suggest that you put it in standby just in case. <laughs> I pulled the second tube with it on and not in standby, and it made a pretty loud popping noise, so don't do that. It'll scare you. But, uh, either way, got to figure this out. I hope it's not one of my precious yellow Astrons. Could be. Uh... Those things go bad. All right, we're getting closer. Talk to you later.